Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel. And if you have been around for a little while, you know that I am trying my hardest to get caught up on some of the book subscription boxes that I have all stacked up beside me. There are about 20 of them and I have myself on a schedule. So you're going to be seeing a lot of book box unboxings, but this one is kind of more current. So you're going to see a lot from 2021 and earlier 2022 showing up in my thumbnail. But this is actually a Once Upon a Book Club adult selection from August 2022 that I am very happy to say was sent to me for review. I am part of their VIP club, so occasionally we have the opportunity to review boxes. Now, this one was a little bit different, and the thumbnail will hopefully stand out a little bit from all of the other boxes that I'm catching up on because it actually didn't come in their classic pink box that's supposed to look like a little book. It actually came in a brown box because one of the gifts was so big it didn't quite fit, and that is part of the reason why you actually saw the August 2021 box just a few weeks ago because I just grabbed a pink box thinking it was the August that I was supposed to be reviewing next. So the book is The Many Daughters of Afong Moy by Jamie Ford, and I really, really enjoyed this. Now, the way Once Upon a Book Club works is they will do a hint, a pretty lengthy hint for the upcoming selection, and they do have an adult subscription as well as a young adult subscription. I usually do the adult subscription. I have my subscription on pause for right now because I want to get caught up on all the boxes I have, but I do often get some of their limited editions, so you will be seeing their advent box box on my channel as well as I think the Halloween box hopefully I get around to that one as well now the monthly subscription is $49.99 and that does include the shipping I have a link and a code for you the code is simply Noel 10 and that will save you 10% on your first box or subscription and I think it works on one-time uh, purchases as well don't quote me on that but I'll leave those uh, that information for you in the description box below what was really cool about this one is this book edition was actually made for Once Upon a Book Club, so it has the sticker on it. It's actually printed on the jacket of this hardback um, book, which I thought was really nice because we don't always get that. And so inside, instead of getting like a signed book plate, there was actually this signed page by the author, which I thought was a really special touch. Now, what makes this subscription so fun, which really brings the pages to life is that as you're reading along, you'll come across pages that have a sticky note and it will tell you to open the corresponding gift. So there's usually three to four and lately they have been including some little extras, some little digital things. Sometimes it might be a QR code for a YouTube video. That was the case in here. In this particular book, we had our usual, the book, we had a bookmark with a quote. We have our quote card with the same quote. And then we have our book club kit, which gives us a little bit more information about the book. Usually there's an activity or some extra information on the backside. And then a nice interview with the author on the inside, as well as read along dates. Now I'm always so far behind. I've never actually done it where I've done the read along dates, but I do think it would be really fun. It's something we've even talked about doing as a community here on the uh, Nobot Nook. Well, the Nobot Nook is our Facebook group that we have for the channel Hi Noel. So be on the lookout for that if you are interested in doing a little uh, online book club with us. Uh, we haven't decided what book club box we would use or what book, of course. But I do think it's a really great concept. There are a few other subscriptions out there that do it, but these guys are really the OG. And a lot of the times they actually have the items made for the book boxes. Now, sometimes you guys know I am not always excited about the paper items, for example, posters or uh, letters that I don't feel like really add anything to it and that I don't know what to do with. I like the really usable products that they often include and sometimes re-giftable products are nice as well. So let's just take a look at the card it says we have many lives but this life begins when we realize we have we only have one so let me read that again because I messed it up we have many lives but this life begins when we realize we only have one so I will read the blurb to you and then I will go through and I will read the passage that goes along with the gift so if this is a book that you don't want to have spoilers on you might not want to watch this video, but at the same time, this is not one of the boxes that is available and ready to ship. I just checked recently and I don't see this one in there. So if it sounds like a good book, go ahead and pick it up. But I don't think they have this on the Once Upon a Book Club site anymore. There are some past boxes that are still available. 
On the back, we do have a quick note from Jamie Ford, which I think is nice. It says, Dear Reader, have you even met someone for the first time? I think, have you ever? I think there's a typo. It says, have you ever met someone for the first time and felt like you've known them forever? Maybe you have, or a part of you has. Something buried in your DNA that recognizes something in them, something familiar, something important. This book is about those moments. I hope you enjoy it. And remember, we also inherit love. So I like having that. And I like little things like this that I can actually keep in the book as a keepsake. Um, like I said, there are sometimes paper gifts that I can't just fold up and stick inside the book. All right, so let me read to you the blurb so you get a better idea about what all of that is uh, talking about. So the, uh, the hint for this particular book was Echo from the Past. It says, Dorothy Moy breaks her own heart for a living. As Washington's former poet laureate, that's how she describes channeling her diso dissociative episodes and mental health struggles into her art. But when her five-year-old daughter exhibits similar behavior and begins remembering things from the lives of their ancestors, Dorothy believes the past has truly come to haunt her. Fe fearing that her child is predestined to endure the same debilitating depression that has marked her own life, Dorothy seeks radical help. Through an experimental treatment designed to mitigate inherited trauma, Dorothy Im intimately connects with past generations of women in her family. Fei Moy, a nurse in China serving with the Flying Tigers. Zoe Moy, a student in England at a famous school with no rules. Lai King Moy, a girl quarantined in San Francisco during a plague epidemic. Greta Moy, a tech executive with a unique dating app. And Afang Moy, the first Chinese woman to set foot in America. As painful recollections affect her present life, Dorothy discovers that trauma isn't the only thing she's inherited. A stranger is searching for her in each time period. A stranger who's loved her through all of her genetic memories. Dorothy endeavors to break the cycle of pain and abandonment to finally find peace for her daughter and gain the love that has long been waiting, knowing she may pay the ultimate price. So there's almost a little bit of like sci-fi in there. And there is one moment where it's almost like a time travel book where I feel like the explanation is that in her therapy, in her epigenetic therapy, she actually created a tangible thing that wasn't actually experienced by the historical character um, or by the actual character in the novel. So I'm a little, I'm still a little bit iffy on it. And so I did spend like kind of a lot of time trying to figure out the actual timeline. So it's told in different chapters uh, from the point of view of the different women. It's actually nine different generations, but they, sh they gave us this little like cheat sheet of the generations. And honestly, like there were like passages that I marked because it didn't quite make sense where it was like, no, you said that this one was her grandmother. So, but then it, here it's like her mother's like grandmother. So it was, there was a little bit of confusion, but I did kind of figure it out at the end, but I did have to like make notes. So there's like, um, there are seven main women, Afong Moy, Lai King, Fei, Zoe, Greta, Dorothy, and then her daughter Annabelle is the one that she's trying to kind of fix things for. Dorothy's kind of the one, the major one who's going through the epigenetic therapy. And then there's two generations that are inserted in there where one of the women has had a son who then has a daughter. So there's that's how there's the nine generations. But And even then, like some of the dates, because they do include dates for each of the characters. For example, um, when we hear passages from Zoe, it's in, the, in 1927, and like lining up how old um, they would be in different years, some of it didn't quite match up. Like for example, there's one year where Faye says she's in her 50s, but if you kind of calculate based on when she had a child and how old her child is in a certain year, you're like, well, she would actually be 45. So there for me, like as a like editor, I was like, this doesn't quite sync. I'm sure it totally does, but like there was some like mental juggling happening for me. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out the gifts. So the first one came on page 15, which was like nice and early on. So it says, this is uh, Faye. She's the one that's a nurse working with the uh, flying tigers. She took his pocket watch, which was old and tarnished and held the heavy timepiece to her ear. The clockworks were silent, idle, dead. As she wound the stem, she felt tension and the spring hinged cover popped open. Faye dropped the box. The room fell silent to her ears, all but the hum of a generator. Inside the watch was a photo clipped from a newspaper. The photo was of her, but she looked much younger, almost a teenager. She had no idea where or when the photo was taken. She'd never seen it before. Faye felt lightheaded and turned the paper over. Written on the back, in her handwriting, were the words, Find me. 
So we have this little box printed for page 15. And then this I thought was really nice. So inside you can see there's like really pretty lining. And then we have this little pouch, which I thought was really cute. So of course we got a pocket watch. So there was this pilot that went down and this is where she finds, this is the kind of sci-fi part that I didn't get. So this is not a working stopwatch. Uh, it's just uh, on a chain. It's more like on a necklace chain though than on a watch chain in my view. So, but that would be a little bit uh, crazy to wear. That's a little intense. It's, it's just the printed on the front though. Though, but it is like a little pill case so I don't know why you would want a pill case that does have a uh, it doesn't have a mirror on the inside why you would want that on a necklace chain but okay but I got it like in terms of it working for the story but it's like I'm like it's not really a necklace it's not really a watch I guess it's a pill case but I don't know why you need a chain on a pill case so inside they did include this little picture so here's the thing they included this picture um, and here it is and it says find me although I don't know that she looks like a teenager in this image but this how the explanation of this doesn't come towards the until towards the end and it's actually Dorothy who's like many generations later who puts this uh, <laughs> who gives it to this pilot that Faye finds and it's actually put in there it's actually a picture of Faye's daughter who she is estranged from and doesn't ever see so it's kind of like somehow she changed time somehow she tangibly uh, created this this item this artifact which I was like that wouldn't have really happened even if you're going through the therapy and experiencing all of the ancestral trauma um, you wouldn't have like had a photograph that your ancestor would have then found that what came from a whole different generation i just thought that was kind of like for me i was like i can't bridge that gap that one all right so page 37 is our next one so let me see if i can find this this is a good gift you guys in terms of like value i thought this was actually really really impressive so this is uh in the section about afong moi who is the first chinese woman uh in america and this is a little bit based on history uh, a little bit based on truth uh he did a little research actually there's quite a bit of research that went into this obviously for all the different generational Chinese experiences, whether it be in London at that boarding school or not London, in England at that boarding school, in China, different parts of China and different parts of the US. So she's basically um, like a circus act, but just a one woman circus act. So they are trying to show her skills. She sings, she does different things. So now her sort of captor, I guess, is a uh, adding to the show. He says, but first I need two volunteers, hale and hearty strapping gents with the most copious of appetites, Mr. Hannington said as he motioned to various men, encouraging them to join him on stage. This will be dinner theater for two of you. A pair of burly men, one in a fine wool suit, though its threadbare condition spoke of his age, and the other in workman's dungarees, stepped over the balustrade and alighted on the stage. Afong stepped back as the Chinese man brought forth a lacquered tray with three bowls of rice and three sets of ivory chopsticks so basically they show off the fact that she can eat with chopsticks and these two burly men just can't do it because chopsticks are so challenging so this is the item that had to go in the big box it is very very heavy i'm going to tell you right now it is very very hefty um my box uh was a little bit ripped which is is okay but that's an example of something where I'm probably gonna hold on to it so I don't mind that it has page 37 printed on it but if I did want to re-gift this and it is a beautiful thing I wouldn't want page 37 printed on the box I wish they did the page numbers with sticky notes so first inside we got this nice little um, box and we've got these three sets of chopsticks now they are metal chopsticks which I honestly find really challenging to use I never learned to use chopsticks properly I am an adopted Korean so I I don't use them correctly. I can use them and I'm pretty good at it, but the way I actually handle them isn't quite right. They do have little grooves here you can see, so that will help with your sticky rice. But I thought these were really pretty in terms of the different colors. It's like a forest green, like a matte black, and then this is almost like a rose gold color, like very faint. So I thought that was cool, although it is interesting that in the story, yes, there are three sets of chopsticks, but you know, in terms of being a useful item, it really would have been nice to get four because three seems like odd to me. Uh, I would have been understanding also if they had had a set of just two pairs of chopsticks because that's how sometimes they come but I do wish we had gotten four sets of chopsticks and they weren't quite so authentic to the book but here instead of our lacquered tray 
uh, with bowls. We got this pretty hefty um, marble tray. So look at how nice this is though, you guys. So it's got these uh, brass kind of handles and it does have these soft feet on it. So it's not gonna scratch anything up, but this is like really, really hefty. So it's like granite, um, it, it is screwed in there. If you wanted to, you could probably use a screwdriver and unscrew it from there. But I thought this was so nice, especially as like a sushi tray, as a sushi platter. Um, I thought this was really, really, like a high quality item for Once Upon a Book Club. So I was pretty impressed by that. So that was my favorite item in this one. Here is an example of a QR code. At one point she is listening, uh, Zoe is listening. So it's all different permutations of the same character, right? Cause they share memories. Uh, Zoe is listening to her favorite teacher uh, play the violin while they're swimming. And so it took us to, it's a very rousing uh, song. It was and pretty long, but she's, uh, what was she playing? Let me see if I can find that real quick. She was playing a very rousing song on her violin, so it did take us to a YouTube video of the Wreckers Overture. Then we didn't have any uh, gifts until much later, so the next one was on page 261. Um, and this is something that comes up over and over because she is a poet, so there's a lot of poetry references. Uh, so this is, again, Zoe, the one we were just talking about. It's listening to her teacher. It says, it's a study of Edgar Allan Poe, Mrs. Bidwell said, closing the book, about how Poe writes about women who are mentally strong and have moral fibers more powerful than their male counterparts. And like Ligeia, who is fur fierce but eventually dies, it seems that all of Poe's women are fated to tragic ends. Madeline Usher, Berenice, Annabelle Lee, they're the idea feminine and yet they all die in mysterious ways. So we get a lot of um, Edgar Allan Poe and references to the poem Annabelle Lee. It came wrapped up in a plastic sleeve and this uh, this side with these cranes is just um, kind of like wrapping paper and then we got kind of like a poster it's almost like a broadside of the poem Annabelle Lee and of course the uh, youngest character in the book is named Annabelle and that's kind of supposed to go along with this idea that you know this poem has come up many times with Zoe with Faye she reads it to an injured soldier um, I wish they had just printed this as a small postcard that I could tuck into the book, honestly, because I'm not going to post this giant poster. I mean, I'm a fan. I get why they included it, but you know, and it wasn't actually printed into the book for probably copyright reasons, but I just, this for me is a paper gift that I don't know what to do with. I'm not going to re-gift it to anyone. I'm not going to post it in my house. I wish they had just given us a smaller version of it. Um, so for me, that was like a gift that didn't really count. So there were really only like three tangible gifts and then the QR code and a paper gift. We had one final item. And this one is kind of quirky and kind of silly. It doesn't really like go with the novel in terms of being like evocative of any of the time periods that are covered, but I guess it was kind of cute. So towards the end, uh, Dorothy is going to seek help. And it was kind of interesting to me like reading about Seattle because I just visited Seattle. So um, there's a big storm coming. So she drops off her daughter because she's having issues at home with her husband and her mother-in-law. So she drops off her daughter to get through the storm with her friends from work. So it says, um, she says, she's basically saying, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave Annabelle with you for, for a second. It says, okay, I'm dizzy. He set her down and helped her off with her coat and shoes. More like a fountain of immaturity, Clark teased. He's teasing Graham, his husband. He handed Dorothy a mug of coffee, splash of cream and some cinnamon, just the way you like it. Dorothy noticed the graphic on the mug, an armadillo sitting in the lotus position like the Buddha. Beneath the artwork was the word carmadillo at least warm yourself up a bit before you head out again clark said so indeed we did and the idea of karma obviously comes into the book a lot with this idea of epigenetics and inheriting uh, trauma from past generations so page 291 we did indeed get a mug that says a carmadillo on it which is quirky and silly it does have a little tag that actually includes the quote from the book I thought it was cute. I honestly think the mug is adorable. I kind of wish they had done this as like a clear sticker so that I could take that off if I just wanted it to be a plain ceramic mug because the mug itself is very nice. I mean, I think some people might find that pretty charming. It's got like a kind of Southwest vibe to it. I think it's kind of cute that it's a carmadillo, but I could see if you were really just looking for like really usable items that you would want it to be plain and you could have just had a sticker that would peel off.
That's my personal thought. I don't mind it. I kind of love how quirky it is to have a Carmadillo, and I do get how this would be a good reminder of the book. But again, I thought this was a really good one. This is like one of the more recent ones. We got that gorgeous sushi tray or serving tray. I wish we had gotten four pairs of chopsticks, but we got three. They seem good quality. The little like locket or pillbox kind of kind of not the best quality but it went with the book and then the mug is very cute and very useful so I thought there were two really top quality gifts in this particular book box but you guys let me know what you thought in the comments below and I'll see you all very very soon in my next unboxing